know if you guys know this because NASCAR didn't really publicize it, but Chase Elliott was back this week. I didn't hear that. I, I couldn't tell. I mean, what did you all think? I saw a ton of comments about how it was a little... I mean, I mean, they had a whole TV spot for Chase well, Elliott. What I, did you all think? I can say that if I was NASCAR, I would have done the exact same thing. Yeah, because the you? week that Chase Elliott took off, we lost a half a million follower, uh, viewers and hadn't gotten them back. And we'll see what this numbers look like. But we were literally down a half a million viewers every yeah. week since Chase Elliott's been out. So if I was NASCAR, I would have ran more commercials. I would have been the Chase Elliott Cup Series this week for all I was concerned. <laughs> I mean, they ran it through pre-race. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? Chase was 15th, 20th, like all day, maybe. And then he did a deal at the end and ended up top with a top 10. He ended. So. He was really good at the end. Yeah. Like, he was better than he us, did a but good he job, couldn't yeah. pass us. We were down 16%, <clears throat> potentially because of one guy. Mm. If that's the case, you better get some more guys. And I think that's the problem with the ratings. There's so many things wrong with our sport from a ratings perspective. My number one thing is these stage breaks. I love them because they pay points. I hate them because they change the flow of the race. Like yesterday, the end of stage one, Logano got lapped. Ross, that the Hell Melon guy, is about to get lapped. Like people are actually starting to pass 80 laps into this race, and we throw a caution and we stop the race. Um, but when you have Jeff Gordon, Dale Jr., Casey Kane, Jimmy Johnson, Tony Stewart, I could keep going. Those are all Hall of Fame guys, superstars. In one race, you have a lot of eyeballs watching the race. Tell me who your superstars are right now. I don't mean any offense to these guys that are buckling in every week, They're even the ones that are listening right now. But who are your legitimate superstars in the race right now? Because I've always been of the belief that the 80-20 rule applies. 80% of the fans pull for 20% of the drivers, which is an old marketing term. Um who are our 20% of the drivers, which would be roughly six guys? Who are our six biggest guys? And are they equivalent to the ones I just said? Yeah. Well, no. But, like, here's what I don't understand. I, I like Chase. There's nothing against Chase. What the hell does he do to be a superstar? Because his personality, like, do you ever see a personality out of Chase Elliott? Like, what is, what is he doing to garner? Like, I think there's way more personality out of a guy like Denny or Harvick that I would have thought would grab people would gravitate towards more, but Chase is just a name and people that's all that I mean, like he's been the most popular but, driver but for how many years? Kevin now? Harvick was more popular ten years ago than he is now. Because Kevin Harvick had a personality ten years ago and now he doesn't either. Yeah. But I mean what like what what do you do? Because it, it's the what is Chase doing? Like what is Kevin Harvick comes out with a personality last year. He comes out with a T shirt making fun of parts. Happy crappy parts or whatever his t-shirt said. I don't I'm remember, sure but it was funny. But the next week he got in trouble. Yeah. So you think he's going to make another t-shirt? Well, that's the thing. Like we talked about this last week. You know, these guys can't be themselves. Like why you can't even be honest with anybody because I'm you're, just you're bringing up a, a point. Y'all can figure out how you want to. I'm telling you right now, if one guy is bringing sixteen to seventeen percent of your ratings, you better go get some more guys. But how? How do you get more guys? Don't find them fifty grand for saying they wrecked somebody on purpose, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, looking at the up and coming drivers, is there anybody that you envision see being the future? There's a bunch of guys. I said, here's the weird part about life right now. My little boy is 10 years old. He's a decent athlete. Uh, he loves sports. I cannot get him to watch a broadcast of anything. It doesn't matter if it's a race. It doesn't matter if it's MLB, NFL, NBA. It doesn't matter. He will get in my car. And instead of watching a live sporting event on my iPad, which he can do because of technology, he watches other people play video games. That's how weird this world is. So instead of watching a NASCAR race, which I would have been doing at 10 years old, instead of watching NFL, he's watching TJ play NBA on an, an Xbox. Well, he's going to be and I'm like, disappointed. What the f are you doing, kid? Like this, and, and so this. So, so when you say, how do we grow our fan base? Well, I don't know. How do you get my 10-year-old to watch the race instead of watching other people play a video game? I'll tell you how you don't do it 
is by prohibiting him from going to the racetrack for five hours or going to the garage for five hours yesterday. Oh, <laughs> man. I, 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 I hate even I'm, – I'm pissed off you even brought that up. So I <laughs> wanted to take Bodie to the racetrack I'm yesterday. I'm really glad I don't know what you're talking about. I do. And I wanted to take Bodie to the racetrack yesterday, okay? Um, I've never had the opportunity to take Bodie to the racetrack, and, and that's a true story. People say, well, yeah, you can take him anytime. Listen, Bodie went to the racetrack when he was a kid, and he would go to Elliot's bus, and he would hang out with Elliot's kids. Elliot would take him on pit road, get his picture made, boom, off he goes. He never went with his dad to the racetrack because I was working. I worked before the race, I worked during the race, and after the race, I hauled <laughs> okay? So I decided this weekend I was going to take Bodie to Martinsville. And I pulled the schedule out, and it says minors prohibited. Well, I was like, surely, and I'm not looking to be privileged, quote, privileged, right? But I'm like, surely that doesn't mean a, someone with a hard card, i.e. me, can't take their child, i.e. Bodie, into the racetrack for a couple hours to hang out. Because my in an ideal world, get him there at 1 o'clock, um, let him tool around the infield, let him see some drivers, let him look at race cars, you know, at, at 2.30, we go up in the stands, we watch the start, we watch stage one. If he gets bored, we leave. If he doesn't get bored, we stay for the whole thing. But I could not take him into the pit area or garage area. So guess what? We didn't go. Yeah, and that's, you know, obviously getting a hot pass isn't for everybody. Like, you can't just go buy a hot pass. But, like, then this, this Bodie's, what, 10, 11? Uh this is for any minor. So you got a 17 year old kid that gets a hot pass. He's not it's, allowed to walk. It's the in. same for Bristol, I Bristol, believe, too, yeah. because of. And it's short track stuff because yeah. there's no cold passes. But, like, I don't get it. Like, you want to, we need to grow the sport. We need to attract younger fans. But now, like, why would a sponsor bring his kid? He was, us, you know, we also need sponsors, obviously. Sponsors can't bring their kids in. Like, we, you know, it, it's just. I don't, it, that doesn't make any sense to we me. We ran into it last year with a sponsor that and signed especially for Bristol. Like the, the timing was like 10 to 3, I think you said, right? Something yeah. like that. Like, So they're allowed in there after 3 <laughs> while the race is going on? <laughs> no. Like, <laughs> Definitely not. No. So when are, the, <clears throat> when are they supposed to get the chance to see their drivers and – you know what I mean? Like, man, I, I told Freddie, you know, and when, when he and I were talking about this, I was like, man, I would open that gate at start finish line and I would let whoever wants to come on that racetrack before the race come on the racetrack. Would I let them in the garage? No. Would I let them on pit road? No. But would I let them on the racetrack? Yeah. 100% I would. Didn't because they, the I cool think, thing is they do that. They do that. From, well, they are good. They should. Because yeah. from there, you can literally see everything. But they shouldn't be petitioned off. They should be able to go wherever they want on the racetrack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they open up for the, I believe, the whole front stretch. Uh, they, I'm sure they probably block it down in one or something like that. But yeah. They do open it up because there's a lot of they fans should. at the gate. They should. We, we, but we've got to figure out how, and this is as a sport, um, we got to figure out how to have superstar mainstream status guys. And right now we don't have any. As big as Chase Elliott is in our world, he's not big in any other world. And when our biggest driver in the sport, whether it be Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt, you know, Jeff Gordon, who, Dale Jr., I mean, I could keep going, whoever the generational guy was, they were mainstream. People were putting them in songs. They were putting them in music videos. They were putting them in um, Saturday Night Live skits. We're not there right now. And we as a sanctioning body, which we aren't the sanctioning body. They are the sanctioning Thank body. God. They, as a sanctioning body, have got to figure out how you grow back into mainstream because for whatever reason, we're not right now. No.